Okay, everyone. Welcome back to the Outer Podcast Series. It's Dave, and I have Mike here. It's my guest co-host to talk podcasting. Mike and I are longtime friends, you know, for at least, what, several weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike, Mike is here, and uh, you're going to learn a lot from Mike and his journey as a podcaster. Mike, welcome to the Outer Podcast Series. My guest co-host. I, I'm glad. I'm glad to be here. You know, I always love talking about podcasts. You know, it's kind of funny because, um, I, 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 my business really is True Man Life Coaching, and the podcast is something that I consider to be the marketing piece of what I do. But I don't think half the people even know I do the coaching. <laughs> they just want to talk about the podcast, which is fascinating to me. Hmm. It. Uh, I really haven't put my finger on the pulse of why that is. And podcasting is such a, a I, I love podcasting, but I think it, it could be one of those things where people are familiar with podcasting, but maybe they don't always run into people that are podcasters. And so when they do, then they think, you know, and then I feel like they've heard a lot of weird things, you know, like um, if you're a podcaster, you must be making like uh just oh. tons of money with all of the uh you know sponsorships right. and all this stuff and uh, so they make a lot of assumptions which are <laughs> really pretty fascinating to me hmm. do you run hmm. into that david um i well i haven't run into the a lot of money part um but yeah the the wild assumptions that well if joe rogan is successful you must be successful yes and uh no uh, and your show must be three hours. No, uh, you must have a big team. No, I don't. I don't have a big team. So, right. Joe Rogan is really the anomaly. And I think that he, he's the complete out outlier. And I think it, it, to some degree, it kind of throws everybody off in the industry because then there's these wild assumptions that are made, right? Because nobody talks about, you know, some, uh, th there's so many podcasts out there. So there's only a handful of people that really get mentioned all the time. And I've noticed even watching the news, um, every time they talk about podcasting, they talk about Joe Rogan. They always use him. And he's a completely, like nobody has the format like Joe Rogan, because quite honestly, if I had a three-hour program, that would just be a complete waste of my time <laughs> at right. this point. Yeah. Um, and then I think to myself, <laughs> who, who could sit there for that long? That's insanity, man. Yeah. And so, I guess there was recent news for him. Uh, he just signed uh, a new deal extension, and he's going to be hosted on Spotify for podcasters. Yeah. Was it like $225 million or something like that? It's a big it's number. Spotify for podcasters? Wow. That's that was a huge number. Different, right? You think he'd go to a big platform and i think joe rogan site. will go to whoever writes in the biggest check yeah it doesn't matter right? yeah because it doesn't he just drags along you know uh people people with him but you know i just think this is a great format i've been able to learn yeah. so much uh, not even just about podcasting but about myself hmm. which has been an amazing journey like if you'd have said to me three years ago, um, you're, you're going to do a podcast or you're just going to flip your phone up and do a quick video and put it on YouTube, I would have been like, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I doubt it. And I, I you know, what I learned really uh, early on was that, man, this is just, this is a lot of fun. And I have a voice and I get to use my voice. However, I want to use my voice in this format. And the funny thing about it, the longer I do this, the more I feel like my voice evolves. Hmm. Um, it's as if, you know, I get more, uh, I get more confidence in what I'm doing. Um, my platform changes and, and they're, they're the things that I want to talk about now, especially for me and true man life and true man podcast. 
the things that I want to talk about uh, in the world of masculinity and men and faith and what's going on in our world, I mean, there are a lot of things to talk about. There's an endless supply of things to talk about. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, I, I enjoy discovering what is my voice? What do I want it to sound like? What do I want to say? Um, and then maybe even what's that line that I can walk up to in terms of boldness? <laughs> mm -hmm. you right. know, yeah. It doesn't get me shut down on social media or whatever platform as a result of me um, having an opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So have you ever gone back and listen to episode one of your show. It's quite interesting. When you go back, you're like, no, oh, wow. But I, I have not. But I, I will say I remember it just vividly because at that point, it was my buddy Paul Bailey and I that started the podcast together. And Paul and I met um, at a networking event and really hit it off and had – you know, a lot of similarities. And we decided at one point we were going to do our own networking group because we didn't like what we saw going on in this other networking group. And it, what it turned into was a men's small group. Th the joke about that was at a certain point, and I was not listening to podcasts at that point. Uh, and I started listening to, I, I would say if I list, started listening to one, it was probably John Eldridge's podcast initially um because of some of the stuff that paul and i were doing in our men's small group but it became a joke like we would end our small group and we'd be like wow that would have made a good podcast and i really got some encouragement from an outside guy in my coaching world when i sent him some blogs and he said have you ever thought about doing a podcast and i went well we kind of joke about it but it, it you know i i didn't know if it was real and i actually went to some people and I said, there's all this podcast equipment out there. Like, what do you, what do you do? I don't even know. Like, how do you pick out this stuff? Like, how does it work? I'm not technical. I don't know. Yeah. And I, and I got some help and I ended up with, um, a lot of different road equipment. Um, and it really wasn't that hard. In fact, my podcast stories may, might be a little unique because I'm intimidated by technology as a matter of fact. Really? I had somebody help me order what needed to be ordered. I ordered it. It showed up at my front door and I thought, well, now you don't have any choice. You just order the equipment. Now you yeah. have to do the podcast. And I went down into my basement. I set everything up and my family came downstairs and they went, and you're going to figure out how to work that board. And I went, and um, truth be told, it's not that complicated. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, for the most part, once you get all the switches in the right spot, you uh, turn the on switch on and go. Uh, really, <laughs> you know? And uh, so that was the start of it. And I remember Paul and I, we got together on a Sunday night to record our first podcast. And both of us were looking at the microphones with much trepidation. And in fact... Uh, we had to have a couple of uh, uh, adult beverages before we would sit down and record. So the the first episode was probably on beer number two, uh, <laughs> so that we could have the guts to to push it forward. And it just grew from there. After you got through the first couple of episodes, like what are we what are we gonna do? You know, then it it just took off and. Essentially, I wanted to do it every week, and that was just too much for Paul. And it's now it's turned into an interview style podcast, which is a ton of fun. I I, I love meeting people, um, and and it gets it hits me right where I am, which is incredibly curious about so many things in the world, and a lot of the things I'm curious about are how do we become a better person or a better man, or a better father, or, you know, all of those types of things, because I want to be the best human being that I can be. And the podcast yeah. platform provides that outlet, you know, to market in that direction. 
And I love it. Where did you get your guidance to start your show in the early days? YouTube, books, other podcasts? What was your kind of your reference point when you got started? It's an interesting question because there wasn't a whole lot of reference points going on, strangely enough. I, I hmm. Again, I mean, I, I hadn't listened to a whole lot of podcasts at that point. Um, To me, I, I'll tell you who my, I honestly believe the reference point was for me. Growing up, I listened to a lot of talk radio, a lot of conservative talk radio. Um, and so these radio influences, um, and even listening, uh, to, um, oh shoot. Now I lost his name. The guy that you used to have a radio program, uh, Paul, no, not Paul. Um, <clears throat> but there, there were radio influences. I think that, that really, you know, stuck with me. Um, and radio was a big deal. Now, I grew up in central Iowa. Hmm. And uh, out of Des Moines, we had a, a TV and radio station, WHO. And well, I, I only bring that up because it's WHO is where Ronald Reagan got his radio start in Des Moines, hmm. Iowa, believe it or not. <laughs> and <clears throat> so, but one of the things that fascinated me with a lot of these great radio people was just how great of storytellers they were. Um, and, you know... Like him or hate him, Rush Limbaugh was a tremendous influence on me yeah. because a lot of people didn't get his shtick, you know. And um, w w yes, he was very political. He had very strong conservative beliefs, very uh, strong faith values. And but but what he was good at was setting up a story. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And people miss that, you know, because, you know, we're so polarized, polarized, easy for me to say, yeah. or polarized by our politics, you know. But uh, to me, it had, it had to have come from that, just that talk radio stuff that I grew up with. And so when I, when I realized that this – very early on that it was going to be a huge challenge for Paul to keep up. I thought I have to prepare myself for what's coming. Mm. And I actually hired a podcast coach, a guy that had been in radio for a number of years. And when I went to him, I said, you know, I, I read a lot about monetization of podcasts, but I don't fully grasp what that means. But my gut tells me that number one, I'm in this for the long run. In other words, what I have found podcasting to be is you have to have extreme patience and it's a marathon run. It's not a sprint. In other words, you're not going to show up after episode 10 and be completely viral. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, unless you're, yeah. um, you know, famous already. And so I knew from the get go, it was going to be a marathon. Then it became, how do I get, how do I master this craft? And so I hired this guy and I said to him, here's the two things that I want from you. I don't care about monetization right now. Maybe I will down the road, not worried about it now, but I'm more worried about quality. And so quality to me meant help me do interviews and help me to tell a story. And I, I feel like the rest will fall from there because and at that point, I didn't necessarily have a plan to write books or have a speaking platform. But my thought was, well, if you do write books or do a speaking platform, you're going to have to tell a story. Yeah. And so the storytelling aspect became a very big deal to me. And it's something that I'm still working on to this day. How do you put a story together? How do you craft it to capture people's attention? And, um, so it's, it's funny you asked that about the first episode, because now I look back on it and it's like, we're, um, you know, we're right around 150 podcasts now. Wow. Um, you know, I'm, I'm involved in three books. I'm writing my own book. 
and you know developing that speaking platform and all of that is a result of the podcast yeah one of the resources i've been tapping into i like where well, i work nights so i i have free wi-fi so i can listen to podcasts and audiobooks yeah i love music too cuz i'm a musician but um, one of the audiobooks I listen to is Story Worthy by Matthew Dix. And he takes you through the process of how to tell a good story. It's called Story Worthy, Matthew Dix. And the audio version is amazing because he talks to you. And he is like a champion at telling stories. And he does these amazing things where he, he you kind of like feel like you're joining a story mid midway through the story. You can visualize it. Like you're there in the scene, in the moment. And then he takes you out of it and you go somewhere else. And then he wraps it all around again, brings you all the way back and finishes the story. And you're like, oh, I didn't even know you were taking me on that path. And now here we are at the conclusion. And oh my, what? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, story worthy. Go, go listen to that. You yeah, will love No, it. I'll have to check that out. I think the importance of that is, you know, that's the journey of life that we go on. Like very few of us like show up on earth and go know for sure how things are going to go. And, and, and for many of us, you know, stuff happens or something gets in the way and, and you've got to figure out how to overcome that. And, and, and again, that's probably one of the reasons I'm doing the, the podcast. I mean, it was connecting into a men's community where, uh, people were being very real, very authentic, very vulnerable. And I think podcasts are perfect for that stuff. You know, people, uh, they want to hear, they want real solutions to the challenges they have. And so they want real, authentic and vulnerable stories. And that's always my goal is, is to tell that. And so, you know, it's not unusual for me to be telling my story. Well, here's what happened to me. Now here's, here's where I'm at. And the journey, by the way, I don't ever feel is complete. Far from it. I'm still mm. learning just like the podcast. Yeah. You know? um, I have some, some podcast help and we're trying to determine how do you, maneuver around in an environment that is continuously changing. So how do you market your podcast? How do you, you know, what are people, what are people paying attention to, you know, on social media, social media is the evolution on social media is intense. There, there's absolutely zero way I can keep up with it. I need somebody who's, in it every day to go, here's what's going on. And podcasting yeah. is very much the same, the yeah. same way. Um, there's, there's really been, um, an evolution in the podcasting industry of how you even, you know, market yourself, I believe. And so the shortcuts of, especially in video is something that we're doing more and more of, you know, and it's got to be a minute or less. And oh, and by the way, if you didn't hook them in the first 10 seconds, <laughs> swipe, swipe, they're not swipe. even going to listen yeah. to the last yeah. 40, you know. So, you know, it's uh, our attention spans uh, have evolved and changed. And I think that was happening anyway. Um, I think COVID made that. Whatever happened during COVID it feels like expedited all kinds of things. Uh, and people have no attention span, you know, whatsoever. Um, I'm starting to wonder if I should start every podcast with a, uh, something like, and I was cut open and bleeding on the street and, you know, and see if I can, <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah. see if I can hold their attention. Cause that, that seems to be the only way you almost have to shock people into listening. Right. Yeah. One of the things I've been challenging um, listeners to, to my show on is when we talk about getting, you know, getting uh, attention for our podcast, a lot of people ask for ratings and reviews. Pretty common. Yeah. One thing I've been putting out there for everyone is 
if there's one analytic I think you're not really paying attention to enough is how long people are listening to your episode, your retention. So if you can get your retention numbers up where people actually listen to the entire thing, not just the first minute of your 40 minute podcast yeah. and you call it good. Hey, I got a download. Woohoo. Uh, I got to listen. So I'm good. But they missed, you know, 39 minutes of your podcast. They didn't listen to anything you said, all that work, all your guesting, all those great questions and your big summary and your big CTA at the end, all that stuff is missing yeah. because they only listen to a minute and you're happy with that. I'm like, I would love to see, because if you're, if I'm the owner of Apple, if I'm the owner of Spotify or whatever platform, I want people to come to my platform, hit play on your episode and stay on my platform to the very end. Because now that's like glue. I want your podcast to be glue on my platform. So I, I'm trying to encourage yeah. people at the end of your podcast to say to them, hey, if you really want to support the show and see the podcast grow, instead of just ratings and reviews, how about you just listen to the entire show? Because that's going to help. Because what's going to happen is Spotify or whatever is going to go, wow, Mike's podcast is great because everybody we send there stays. Stays, yeah. They don't bounce after one minute. They're, they stay for the whole thing. So this must be a good podcast. Let's promote Mike. And I think that's kind of a, a thing that people don't talk enough about. Just stay to the end. Yeah, I I agree with that. And along with that, I would say that, um, you know, getting that audience participation um, is big. This is something that we're talking more and more and more about with my show. Um, I don't care. I would rather have fewer listeners and more people, uh, you know, us having that conversation uh, than, you know, having a bunch of people who check out after five minutes. And one of the ways that we're trying to do that uh, is, is constantly trying to improve the website and provide tools that, and many of them, you know, are going to be free tools uh, we want to attract people to the the website so that they can gain more information about what's going on in the true man community. Um, and so we're trying to adjust to that. Social media is another adjustment. That the, the challenge with podcasting is that unless you do something live, you know, on a platform where you're able to interact right then and there. There's no interaction, you know, right now we're recording this. There's no interaction going on between you, me, and the audience. Now, where you can get that interaction is on social media. So how are you going to attack your social media and um, get that audience interaction? And that's always a huge challenge in an environment where there's a lot of noise. I mean, social media is a lot of yeah. noise. And this, a very different medium than yeah, podcasting. It really right. is. And this is where the importance of knowing who your audience is, what your niche is, yeah. really being able to uh, drill down into your audience. Who are you trying to attract? What problems are you trying to solve? And, you know, these are conversations I've been having for ongoing for I mean, probably well over two years at this point. Yeah. And I, I'm I've kind of come to a place where I don't think we ever stop having those discussions uh because it it evolves. You know, it, it evolves. Um, I think now for me, I'm trying to attract men. And typically that that I'm trying to attract those men in that age range of probably between 40 and 60. So that, you know, most of those guys are going to be dads, you know, fathers, husbands. Um, yeah. There's a 50, 50 chance that they're married. The divorce rate's so high that a, a good majority of them are probably either divorced or on their second marriage. Um, that's a reality and that's okay. So, you know, we're, we're, in fact, just the other day, we was having conversations about, well, what if we did, um, you know, Facebook ads and we we ran these targets where we were, we were trying to attack. And um, 
Now that's a little bit beyond my expertise, but I got to figure out how to to dive into that a little bit deeper with the help of somebody walking alongside me, because um, I'm not I'm not I'm just not savvy there, um, and it, it's it's only because I just don't take the time. I haven't taken the time to learn it. I mean, I'm sure yeah. I could figure it out, but but I think that's the big thing with podcasting is that I mean, and I get people all the time. They'll say to me. I'm I'm sure you get this too, uh, David. Um, well, I'm thinking about starting a podcast. It's always I'm thinking about starting a podcast, and I'm like, well, what do you want to know? I, I can I can go about it one of two ways. I can sugarcoat it, or I can give you the truth. Now, which one? Mm. Which one would you mm-hmm. like? You know? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the um, the sugarcoat is usually starts with, well, it's a lot of fun. Now we know that is, but the straightforward approach is it's a lot of work. Are you prepared to do a lot of work, especially in the short term, in order to gain those long-term results? You know, And you usually see their enthusiasm disappear a little bit. Um, because again, I, I don't, I don't know exactly why this is in this format. People, they don't, they hear the finished product. I think that's the the challenge, right? They hear the finished product. They don't see, um, the connections that occur or maybe the pre interviews that occur. And then we do the podcast and then yeah. there's the, post podcast and then becomes the social media and you know and i'm just being upfront and honest here i mean these are the things that go on and mm. now unfortunately we we seem to live in a society where every they, they they want everything easy yeah now, there is a way to get it done easy right you know this you just hand it all over to somebody and you then you just show up and give your voice. That that's about it. And have somebody else do the social media and all that stuff. But if you got that kind of money, hmm. right. Um I'll give you my website. <laughs> yeah. Come and see me. Come and see me. I'd love to. Um so okay, here's my challenge with I have a love hate relationship with social media. I agree. Um right there with you. So Social media is so different. It's quick hits really fast. Go, 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 which is the direct opposite of many podcasters. And when I throw all my weight behind posting on social media, whatever platform, I find that I'm talking to people, some people who don't even care about what a podcast even is. So I'm telling them to come and listen to my show. And they're like, no, I'm not interested in that. Uh, If you had a one minute podcast you know, two, five, ten times a day, I'd be interested in that, but yeah. I'm not interested in 45 minutes yeah. of you. Right. So what I've been trying to do is do things a little different in addition to social media. I do want to have a presence there because people will find you and that's yeah. great. But so I started a meetup group on meetup.com yeah. and now I meet with other podcasters and people who are thinking of starting a podcast, get them all in one room together and share wisdom around the room from people from around the globe. That works. I put SpeakPipe on my website so people can leave me a voice message. And I threaten them, my <laughs> listeners, that if you leave me a message, I'll make an episode about your podcast just for you. And they're like, wait a minute. So if I leave you a voice message and tell you about my show, you're going to make an episode for me. I will. I'll bring in your message that you left for me. Yeah. I'll go grab your trailer. I'll listen to your show. I'll put all your links to everything for your podcast. And then ask my audience that listens to my show to come over and support you. Yes, I'll do that for you. And I get people who are like, okay, I heard you say that like 10 times. And I don't believe you. But on the 11th time, I'm like, okay, fine. I'm going to try this. And they, they, they do it. They leave me a message. And off we go. I jumped in a Facebook group and there's yeah. so many podcasts, face group, Facebook group. And as soon as you see somebody go, hi, I'm new. I want to start a podcast. Where do I start? I'm like, oh no, 
Here comes yeah, another I know. Here, it's, yeah. here yeah. it comes. Here it comes. Yeah. Right. So yeah. people are like throwing stuff. Oh, you need this mic. You need this host. You need this stuff. Well, you know, yeah. and the, here's the desperation in that. And I see this on so many different formats. I'm just going to call it what it is here. So I, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups too, David, and I see this thing over and over again. People, I do believe people sincerely reach out into those groups for help. But here's yeah. what comes back at them. I need a sale now and bomb, bomb, bomb. And they bombard them. They bombard people. Now, I typically take the opposite approach, which is something that usually goes along this lines. I don't know what you need. I'm here to help you. I can be here to support you. But you and I are going to have to have a conversation in order for me to understand what exactly you need. Because I, you know, and w that is so unusual on Facebook and other social media formats that somebody does that. It rarely, if ever, gets a response. And instead, people just bombard somebody with here's a link to direct message me and da 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 da. And um, my hunch is a majority of the time that doesn't work. Um, and so I, I see that, David, and I, I really, I think it's sloppy. Yeah. I think it's lazy. I don't know how people build their businesses like that. Um, it's not creative. Um, it's uh, transactional. Uh, yeah. And I, I don't think transactional relationships are built to last. Um, and I'm all about building relationships authentically and real and by being honest with people. Um, I don't, there's a lot of BSers on social media. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, it's unfortunate. And usually most of them have an affiliate link as well. <laughs> um, Everyone comes in with an agenda in those responses. And if I see like 35, 55 responses to a question, I'm like, oh, it's too late. <laughs> I'm not even going to get in here because there's going to be like people arguing with each other in the comments and everything. I'm like, come on, people. Like this is a genuine question from somebody who's truly interested. Let's not push them out of podcasting before they even start. Let's build that up. Let's, let's do that. So there's one woman I, I responded to her post. And um, I just said, hey, I have a podcast that teaches this kind of stuff. And I'm always looking for people to come on my show and just talk about your questions. I'd love to have you come on. That was it. That was my that was my request. So she came on and we did like a little pre-chat. And she said, you know, I want to monetize my podcast. Um, and I'm really curious about how to do this. I said, like, I don't even have my show started yet. She says, I, I make really good money at my job. So how long will it take me to quit my day job? <laughs> wow. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. So you make really good money at your job? Yeah, but it's just not my thing. You know, I'm kind of doing it, but I'd love to be, do this other thing. I'm like, okay, well, I love your passion, but early days of your podcast with zero listenership to start with, you know, you're going to make enough money to get yeah. ice cream at Dairy Queen maybe <laughs> at the beginning, but you're not going to be able to pay your house off. Just so you know, like at the beginning, Miracles can happen, and I hope they happen for everyone. Yeah. But I'm just a little bit of caution. Just you oh, know, you're going to hear people say the opposite to you. They're going to tell you, you know, bang, you can make a million bucks in five seconds. There's got to be some kind of balance there too. You know, I I uh, I tell everybody all the time, you know, and you and I were talking here a little bit before we recorded this. You know, I had a business relationship that came out of episode 38 of the True Man podcast. Okay. I'm up to almost 150. Now, that, that uh, particular business, um, for the most part, has not gone public yet. You know, in other words, for the most part, a lot of people don't know about it. So this has been an evolving thing for me over the last couple of years. What will be the end result of that business? Well, we will probably um, 
use that as some degree of monetization with the podcast. The however is, and this is where I think people miss it. What is that? What is that? relationship ultimately become by far not even close nothing will even top it not i mean there's no way i could top it i would love to try but uh, there it, it, it will become my largest um monetization of the podcast just not not even close now, what do I mean by that? Well, what people need to understand about monetization is monetization comes in different forms, right? There's the monetization that comes with having an advertiser or um, a sponsor for a show. That's pretty immediate if you do that. Or there is monetization that comes by building strategic relationships and partnerships. And that's really what I have focused the most on. Now, that is also very long term. That is also can, or can be very long term. I have a strategic partnership that occurred with another gentleman where we're going to be offering uh, um, courses and workshops. And we've been in the development of that for a while. And, and of course, part of that comes down to marketing, which is really mm -hmm. we have the we have the course and the workshop completed. It's been completed and, and uh, it comes down to really working on the marketing piece which is what we're working through right now. But, um, you know, that, that relationship occurred because he found me online and had a very similar name to a program he was offering. And we we found out we get a lot in common and, um, we've become pretty close. And so we're building a strategic partnership out of that. And I, I, I gotta say, I think people underestimate the partnerships that they can develop you know, by having yeah. uh, a podcast yeah. and uh, I don't ever go into a relationship looking for that. But if I see that opportunity is there, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask somebody about it. You know, here's yeah. what I'm doing um, as it's kind of similar to what I did with you before that we recorded this. Here, yeah. I'm doing this thing, you know, and, and, you know, it, that's what's cool. We're building a relationship, you know, if you're especially when you're doing an interview style or a co-host style like we're talking about right now, you know, you're building that relationship. Why wouldn't you want to share each other's expertise if it's a good fit? Yeah. Yeah. And and so maybe I'm different, I don't know, but that <laughs> I I look for those. Why wouldn't I want to help good people? So you don't necessarily have to have a mattress commercial in your podcast to make money. You can make money by having a podcast, which gives you the opportunity to get comfortable speaking and then end up with a speaking gig and stand in front of thousands of people and make money from your show because now you're a speaker on stage. 100%. And, and what's, right? the, what's the reality of, and I'm just going to pick a round number, what's the reality of going to a speaking gig and standing in front of 100 people? Well, you spoke, maybe you got paid for it. If you have a book, maybe you sold a book. But chances are, um, let's just say you picked up 10% more listeners. Well, I mean, you know, it's easy to go, well, that's only 10 people. Well, how many speaking gigs do you have done, you know, uh, you know, a year or, and I'm just using a round number of a hundred, which is, you know, that would be, but that that's the whole point. People ask me all the time, Mike, how do you promote your show? Well, word of mouth. A lot of it is word of mouth. I talk about it wherever I go, wherever my feet are, chances are pretty high. I'm going to mention I do a podcast. Why? You know, people love to talk about it. You know, they love to talk about it. I'm a podcaster. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. They love to talk about those things. Well, you know, when I tell them I'm a coach, there are some people that roll their eyes because, you know, they know a lot of people that have gotten into coaching and consulting. That's neat. That's neither good nor bad, by the way. It's all in how you present it. But what I've discovered is I have no problem telling somebody I'm a podcaster because they want to talk about it. You know, I have a group that I go to almost on a weekly basis. And every time I walk in that room, somebody's going to ask me how the podcast is going. Yeah. 
I have a uh, shirt that I designed that says on the back, it says, you're following a podcaster. Because we always ask people to follow us, right? I like that. And there's a QR code. There's a QR code for my show. So even if I don't, I'm not even talking to you. You could snap a picture of my QR code and go right to my podcast. So I don't even have to say anything. Very clever. I don't even have to say anything. It's just, you know, standing in line at Walmart, they're following a podcaster, right? Because you're like, follow my show, follow me on. Right. It's right on my shirt. So. Now you know what I might I might I might consider that you know and, and I, I gotta say that's really smart I mean uh, and if nothing else it strikes up a conversation some people are gonna ask you about it and it's I gotta say yeah. that is really really important because people don't strike up conversations like they used to because their heads are buried in their phone but if you do something unique like that yeah you know um, hmm. Well, you got the wheels turning. I may have to See? come up with. I may have to come up with a uh, t-shirt. Yeah, so it's great. Little things like that just help set things apart. And here's here's a win for you too, uh, Mike. I had a a listener reach out to me. He found my show through a Google search. He typed in "how to podcast." It's how to podcast series. It's kind of right in the name. Yeah. He found it on Google. Went and listened to a recent episode. Then went back to the beginning. I've got 270 episodes. Yeah. He went back to the beginning and listened to 100 episodes. And then he used my calendar link on my website, scheduled a time with me. It's I was free to do that. He comes on the camera like this with me, like we're doing right now. And uh, he's in Warsaw, Poland, which is amazing. And yeah. he's like, um, okay. He says, I love your show. I love what you talk about. I'm really loving it. He says, I, I want to give you something. And I'm like, like advice? <laughs> like, I, what do you, what do you, what do you mean you give me something? He's like, what kind of camera do you have? And at the time, I had a cheap camera from Amazon, twenty bucks, right? Just a USB. <laughs> Off we go. He's like, I want to buy you a new camera. And I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> but we just wow. met each other. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy you a, a new camera. He probably had some camera sponsorship deal. <laughs> <laughs> so he, what he did, I be, on my website, I have buy me a coffee to to donate to my show. Right. So he bought me the equivalent <laughs> amount of coffee in five dollar increments for me to buy my new camera, and I ordered it from Amazon, and it showed up, and he paid for the whole thing. Out of so, curi- out of curiosity, what camera are you using now? Everybody wants to know. Yeah, L O G I Logi, Logi. It's uh, like one hundred and fifty bucks on Amazon. So he paid for the whole thing, and I'm like. And it was the one he recommended to me. He's like, I really like this camera. It's one I use. He said, I'd like to get you something like this. So pick something out and, you know, here's the money. So going back to the monetization part again, I bought, I put that buy me a coffee thing on my website and I just left it there. I had somebody yesterday bought me 48 $5 coffees. 48 of them, one person for listens to my show. So in the last seven, eight months through Buy Me a Coffee alone, I brought in almost $3,500. And that's just from people listening to the show. Going, there's something about the show, whether they give me a one $5 coffee or three $5 coffees, there's something about it. So when I met with this woman that I met in Facebook who wants to monetize, yeah in the name of her show that she's thinking about, it had something to do with coffee, you know, coffee with Mike or something like that. That's the name of her podcast. So I'm like, okay, you have the word coffee in there. You need to buy me a coffee donation page for this podcast. Cause then what you could do on your show is cause you're going to interview somebody. It'd be like, okay, everybody, welcome to the coffee with Dave podcast. Today, yeah. my guest is Mike, Mike, just so you know, um, Robin, donated the coffee for our show today. Thank you, Robin, for using the Buy Me a Coffee link on my website. Today's coffee sponsor, listener of the show, Robin, thank you so much. And then you do that kind of stuff and it just builds on top of on top of each other. People get to hear their name on the show. People love to give back to a yeah. podcaster they, they yeah. fall in love with because we put out value. We try our best to give great content, great guests. We put a lot of time and effort into our show oh and when somebody reaches out to you and goes mike your show 
that episode number 53. That was awesome. It's just, like it changed my life. I think different now. I treat my, yeah. my partner better. My kids, my kids respect me now because of what you talked about. My whole life is different. How can I give you something? And if they go to your website and there's nothing, there's no way to give back to you. There's no way to, to reinvest in you as the host. It, I think they get a little frustrated because they're like, you give, give, give as a host. And I just want to give you something back. So if we do something simple like <clears throat> speak pipe so they can leave a message and buy me a coffee so they can donate and then just leave it there as an option. You don't even have to talk about it. Really, it's just there. And now they have an opportunity to give back. So what I do when somebody comes on with me, knowing that my audience is so kind to donate to me through my buy me a coffee thing, I take that money and I reinvest it back into the podcasters. So I asked that girl, the woman that I met on Facebook that was inundated by all these comments. Remember, she's going to come on my show. I said, set up your buy me a coffee for your non-existent podcast. Yeah. You haven't even started yet. And send me the link for your buy me a coffee. Because I want you to be able to say on episode one, today's coffee sponsor was Dave. Thank you, Dave, for sponsoring my very first episode of my show. And Dave bought me coffees. So I bought her three coffees and I sent that to her about half an hour after we met. And she's like, who are you? <laughs> like, really? Right? Love that. Yeah. So instead of being inundated by all these comments and people jumping on on top of her and saying, do this, do this way is the best way. And the best mic is this. And the best host is this. And blah, 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 blah. Just one person showing up and going, like you said, how can I help you? Like, how can we sit down and help you? I'd love to be there for you and just talk you through this. That's a different type of person. And I think we need yeah. more of that in podcasting. So I'm glad you brought that up earlier. I think that's an amazing way to, to kind of cut through the noise that's out there. Well, it, you know, I, I live in this give or taker world. And obviously, I feel much more strongly that um, you should be a giver versus a taker. Uh, in fact, you're, you're, you're making me reevaluate. Uh, maybe I need to have something on my uh, homepage or something. Not necessarily coffee. I got. I've. I've. I've another angle, but. Uh, but you know, it's. Uh, and it, it's just a great way to participate. I mean, you know, I. I think, if you have a heart to serve, it's important that you figure out how to serve. And and I. I mean, I. I just. I'll be honest. I give away a lot of stuff. I give away a lot of free services. I talk with a lot of people. I don't charge them. Um, I'm not condoning that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. just saying. I mean, hey, I everybody. Give, <laughs> I give a, a I give a lot because I get a lot in return out of that. Um, but um, you know, it, it's uh, I, I've had so many people come at me. Not lately, but I mean, especially early on, people would ask me about podcasts and I realized I'm not the guy you need to talk to. Do you want me to refer you to somebody? Because like, I realized I was taking a lot of time talking about that and really where I needed to be taking more time was with the guys that I serve. Cause there's so many of them out there. I mean, there's so many, um, you know, I was at a retreat last weekend with a couple hundred guys and, um, you know, I, I mean, every one of them's got a story. And so I have to be careful how I serve um, because I can only, there's, there's only so many hours in a day. Yeah. <laughs> and I got to yeah. eat too. So I got, right. you know, you do, you know, like it or not, I'm not, uh, I don't have a charity. I have a business and, you know, it, it's, it's based on business model principles. And so I have to find a way to monetize everything I do. Um, and I think that we'll do more of that with the podcast down the road, uh, with some things, uh, in the, in probably in the near future. But, um, you know, what I wanted to do more importantly, it was very important to me to understand this craft, this art, which is what I consider it. And, and respect it in a way that I was doing a good job. And so the, 
and I, I feel like I've gotten, obviously there's always room for improvement, but I feel like I've gotten to that point. And now it's time for me to move on to some, some other things. I was just talking with somebody the other day and interestingly enough, he has an interesting, it's fascinating to talk to pack podcasters because of the philosophies that are out there. Uh, he charges a hundred and it was an interesting amount, but after I started thinking about it, I'm like, that's actually kind of fair. And if you do four of those a month, that's not, he charges $149 to come on his podcast, which I thought was interesting. Um, that requires you to have an audience that'll pay you $149. Now I will say, uh, I assume if somebody pays $149, that they uh, fully intend to uh, use that in their social media and market it, which is a common problem in the podcast community is that you have guests on and they don't market it. Yeah. Um, even some podcasters I think are really poor about how they um, do some of their uh, marketing when they send it out. Um, yeah. But um, you know, I, I always look at it this way when I have a guest come on, I want to edify them as much as I possibly can. And uh, whether they m market it or get it out there, I have no control over that. But I would like to think if somebody charges 149 bucks, they're probably going to do a better job of that. But that's his business model. And basically that $149 goes right back into the podcast to pay for the people doing the video and the editing and all that stuff. So, you know, if you're doing a, sh you know, a, show a week you know um basically you're paying to get those services done and um yeah you know it's it's uh especially for somebody like me i don't i was editing the podcast for a while i don't edit the video i don't even know how to edit video i don't have a desire to learn how to edit video but the, yeah. that comes into play on channels like this where you and I are on zoom right now and you take that video and you put it out on social media and you take yeah. those clips and put them out there and it just becomes a very important aspect and another way to market your show all part podcasting. I love it. Okay. So Mike, before we close off, curious to hear your answer for this one. I have an answer and I want to see what yours is. If you could, if you could equate a podcaster to a superhero, what would they be? What would be their superpower that a podcaster needs? I have one, and I can't wait to tell you mine, but there's something about this superhero that they need, a key element to being a great podcaster. Whatever that is, what would that superpower be for the superhero podcaster? What's your guess? What do you got? Oh, my gosh. Come on. What a question. Superpower extraordinary like people go oh my gosh he's a she's a blah 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 what is it what is it what is it, what is why it? this is come on the first super superhero that popped into my head was batman and, and and it just had to be because i mean like if you were able to jump into a podcast and go i'm the batman <laughs> <laughs> i mean it sounds kind of <laughs> yeah that was the right. first thing that popped into my head. I'm the Batman. <laughs> Batman. Batman. <laughs> you know, I can't even do it the way that, uh, yeah. you know, some of those first Batman movies came out. And I just thought that was really cool. Uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, you got you to gotta be able to wear a mask and have a nice deep radio voice like Batman. And you, you, can, you can play. And Batman had all kinds of talents, right? You know, so uh, could scale tall building yeah right Skin. no obstacle stands in yeah. the way yeah so mine would be that we need to be contagiously curious oh yeah like it has to be contagious like it has to spread because as for me as a as a host of a podcast i think that's my superpower is i'm curious yeah i wanted i want wait what did you say that's when the car went off the cliff. What do you mean the car went off the cliff? Yeah. Explain that to me. You can't. Wait, wait, wait. Back up, back up, back up. Right? <laughs> I'm like, you what? can't manufacture curiosity. You either have it or you don't. And um, I have a lot of fun with curiosity. And to the extent that I don't, 
I probably need to quit podcasting, you know? Um, and it, it is an important element of putting on a good show. I've had people at the end when we're all done, they shut off the camera, we're all finished recording, and they look at me as a guest on my show and they're like, where do those questions come from? Because <laughs> they're used to being on shows where they're asked the same five questions. Blah, yeah, blah, blah. I, and I, I showed them a blank piece of paper. I hold up a blank piece of paper for them. Like, I don't have anything written down. I was just following you. Like, it's all about you. Right? Yeah, I'm the same way. I am. Yeah. Um, you know, the only thing that I typically have in front of me um, is the quick bio that I'm yeah. gonna, I'm going to say for the show. I'll think through what's that leading question to kick it off. And... What I tell everybody is after that, it's Holy Spirit driven. Yeah. And, yeah. and so most of the time that works out okay. Now, circling back to storytelling, some people can't tell a story. And, and, and sometimes that's heartbreaking to me. I had a guy that had written a book and he said to me, Mike, I think this book is going to be a bestseller by the end of the year. And I didn't say anything. I mean, I hadn't read the book, so I can't. His story was compelling. The problem was he couldn't tell the story, right? There's got to be some logic to telling your story. And it was all over the place. And I was thinking to myself, your book can't be a bestseller because you can't tell the story. The reality is, is that and I know this as somebody who's even authoring, a percentage of people are not even going to read your book or they might not even get through the first or second chapter. I mean, how many books? I got a lot of books here. A lot of them I use for reference, okay? I, full disclosure, I use a lot of things as reference material. But I also have a lot of books that I haven't read or maybe I didn't get past the first or second chapter. But people will buy your book or they will come hear you speak if you can tell the story. And this guy couldn't put it together. And I was kind of heartbroken by it because I'm like, man, this guy has an incredible story. You can't tell it. And it's going to be really, really difficult for him to have a best-selling book if he can't tell the story. I mean, it's not like they're going to invite you on, you know, Fox and Friends in the morning if you can't tell a story. I mean, it just doesn't play well. It doesn't make good television, you know? No. And so you got to be able to tell that that story. And, uh, that translates to so many different things. It certainly translates to doing a podcast in many ways, because there are going to be times when you're going to have that guest come on and you better know how to fill in like real fast. Yeah. Um, and that's a skill. It does take practice. Um, I don't like it when it happens. If I'm doing a podcast interview and I'm talking too much, there's a problem. Right. Um, and, yeah. uh, you know, but I understand that, especially in the book arena, a lot of the book uh, people are telling their authors to go out and get on as many podcasts as they possibly can. That should help them tell their story better. Doesn't, that, that doesn't always translate that way, but, um, Yeah. I love it. All right. So, Mike, I've had you for so long and I could keep you here all day, but I know you got stuff to do. You got podcasting stuff to do. Tell us again, Mike, where your show is, um, where we can connect with you. There's so much to talk yeah, about. Absolutely. So what do yeah, absolutely. Where do we do? My, yeah. my website is uh, 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 always the best place to go truemanlifecoaching.com. It's something that, you know, it's a work in progress. We're trying to figure out how to, in a quickly moving culture and society with evolving media, how do we change that, and make it more effective? But, you know, if you go out to my website, truemanlifecoaching.com, you'll find my podcast on there, my blogs. You can get a hold of my books. And, and that just kind of acts as the landing page for everything. And you can connect with me on social media. The podcast, my True Man 
podcast.com. I always, people always say to, to me, um, I, I learned this really early on. So here's a hint for you. Um, people would say to me, how can I find your podcast? Well, I mean, if we stood here and went through all the things that I'm on and I'm, it's all major channels like Apple and Spotify and all that stuff, but I bought the URL truemanpodcast.com, which is linked to my webpage. Smart. So that when people say, how can I get a hold of you? I just say, go to truemanpodcast.com. Now my podcast is on there and then I have connections to four or five of the top um, podcast tools like Apple and Spotify, even that's changing, right? Because it's funny. It used to be like Google was on there and now they're getting, yeah, yeah. you yeah, know, yeah. Every, you know, some of them are getting out and some of them are getting in and it, it's a moving target. But, you know, my recommendation to you is if you're going to have your podcast, you, you can put it on your webpage, but just link the the podcast to it. You know, the yeah. whole point is to get people to your, make yourself sticky, Right. Get them to your, um, you know, web page, I guess. I mean, what I need to do is I have a $5 coffee offer or something like that. <laughs> Sounds like, um, but, uh, <laughs> but that, but that's it, you know, go out to my web page and connect with me on my social media and you can connect to the show and, um, I, and, and connect with me. I love to hear from people. I really do. And I mean that that's just a sincere offer. I have my phone number out everywhere. My emails out everywhere. My calendars everywhere. You know, if you want to get to me, you can get to me really easy. So there you go. There you go. Okay. Everyone go over and support Mike and all the great stuff that's happening over there. Uh, and share that again with uh, any guy in your life. They need a little bit of true man in their life. So yeah. Mike's got them covered. So there send them to his podcast. Come on. Awesome. Uh, come back in the future, Mike. I'd love to have you back Absolutely. on again. You bet. And you're going to be on some of my other shows. You're coming on Dad Space. So that's, and next chapter. That's good too. So there hey, you go. lots of good stuff ahead. So thank I'm you everywhere. for doing this. <laughs> thank you for doing this. This is great. You bet. Absolutely enjoyed it. All right, everyone, go check out all the information in the show notes, as always, and let no, let Mike know that you heard him on the podcast. Mike, again, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you for sticking all the way through to the very end. It's bittersweet that the episode is over and that we're done for this episode, but you will come back and I will come back and... You know, there's you and me, and we're one big happy family here at the How to Podcast series, far beyond being just pod pals, which is fine, but I'd much rather do do life together as family here. And to that end, a reminder as we talked earlier in other episodes as well, that we do have a meetup group, and you are invited. I would love to have you come. It's free. We do them scattered throughout our calendar different days, different times, because we have people listening around the world, like Cuba and Warsaw, Poland. Hi, Cuba. It's amazing how we can reach the world with a podcast. So through our meetup group, what we do is we get together. It's free for you. Cost me money, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. We get together. We meet other podcasters. We talk podcasting. And it's a way to get from behind the microphone, sitting by ourselves, recording on our own, and doing community podcasters need community you need to meet other podcasters and just in a low-key fun environment talk podcasting so my challenge to you in 2024 and beyond is to get into a meetup group find other podcasters introduce yourself and make new friends it's just like school all over again grade nine let's meet each other and share the podcast journey Go to howtopodcast.ca and click on all the information you'll find there around our meetups. And I'd love to have you there. Thanks for listening. Catch you on the next episode. Get out there and record your podcast. Take care. <laughs>